Hey everyone, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be looking at one method for making strand lights in Blender. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful. You can also follow me on Twitter at Johnny Gizmo. So when it comes to decorating a scene, strand lights can give it a hint of realism. I was looking for a way to make them in as procedural a way as possible, and I came up with this method. I hope it inspires you to do something even more creative. So to start, you're going to need an item that's going to be on the strand. Now of course this doesn't have to be light bulbs. It could be popcorn strands or a necklace of some sort. But for our purposes, I went with a bulb shaped Christmas light. So here's the model that I came up with. I basically have a base and the bulb. Where the bulb is emitting light and the base is just a simple white plastic. Of course, you'll want to experiment with various shaders to get the light emitting the way you want it to, or to get the look that you're going for. I just went with pretty simple on the lights this time. Now that we have our light bulb, we need an object that will determine where the bulbs will be placed. So to do this, go ahead and create a plane and delete all but one vertex. In object mode, go to the object menu, select set origin, and say, origin to geometry. This is going to make it so that the origin of our geometry is on that single vertex. And finally, then with our object selected, hit Shift S and say selection to cursor. This will move our single vertex object to the world origin. Going into edit mode, with that one vertex selected, press E to extrude and extrude out a single line. The distance of this line is going to be how far each of the objects are going to be apart on your strand. For good measure, let's press Ctrl A and apply scale. Now we want this to repeat. And we're going to want this to be able to repeat some arbitrary amount of times. So to do that, let's go ahead and add an array modifier. We'll go to add modifier, array. And since this is already lined up along the x-axis, the default settings for the array modifier are to duplicate the object along the x-axis in a relative one length. Let's go ahead and select Merge, and that'll make sure that overlapping vertices get merged together. For the time being, let's just change the count to 10, so we have a nice long line. Now let's get to duplicating. We'll change our window type here to Geometry Node Editor, and say New. We'll add a point instance node, put it in the tree, and select our light bulb. We should now have 11 total light bulbs on our chain. All right, looking bright already. Now we want to put our light bulbs on a wire, but we don't want that wire to just be straight. We want it to have a little bit of personality. So to do that, we're gonna use a curve modifier. Now we don't want just any old curve. What we're gonna use for this tutorial is what's called a catenary. A catenary is the type of curve that a hanging chain or cable makes under its own weight when it's only supported at its ends. But to get this, we need to add an add-on into Blender. So if you go up to your edit menu and go to preferences, under the add-on section, type in extra. You should have two entries, add curve extra objects and add mesh extra objects. Personally, I would recommend enabling both, but for this example, you'll want the Add Curve Extra Objects plugin enabled. Because a catenary curve hangs from two points, we need to create a couple of empties to hang this curve from. Now, I've created a gazebo object to string up our lights onto, so I'll add the empties matched up with the place I want to hang the lights on this gazebo. We'll go here and here. With these two empties selected, we'll press Shift A, go to Curve, Knots, and then Catenary. Immediately you'll see that a curve has been created hanging between these two points. We can further edit this curve by expanding this extra options menu and changing it here. The main item you're going to want to change is the A value. This is how droopy the curve is. So the higher this number, 
the tighter the curve, and the lower this number, the droopier this curve. I think that looks pretty good. Now we want to line up our curve object and our light chain object. Going into front view, I'm going to make sure my curve is selected, press Shift S, and say cursor to selected. My 3D cursor now jumps up to my curve object. I'll then select my light chain, press Shift S, and say selection to cursor. You'll see now that the light chain is starting at the origin of the curve object. This is what we want. Next, we want the curve to control the overall shape of our light chain. So to do that, we'll add a curve modifier to our light chain. We want to make sure that the curve modifier is put between the array and the geometry nodes. Using the object picker, we will pick our catenary curve. Immediately you'll see that our light chain is now following the curve. Already I can see my lights are too close. So with the light chain selected, I'll go into edit mode. I can simply move the second vertex to the right until I get the distance that I want. The spacing looks about right now, but I don't have enough light bulbs. There are two ways that I could fix this. The first is I could simply increase the count till it gets to the point that I want. You'll notice if I add too many, it'll just continue off into the distance. Another option is to change the fit type in the array modifier to fit curve. In this case, you simply select the curve object you want it to use, and then it will try to calculate the right number of elements. However, I've found it is often that you get an extra object. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to fixed count and get the count that I want. In this case, you'll see that my first light bulb lines up exactly with this point and then my last one doesn't quite reach the end. So if I grab my whole light chain and constrain its movement to the x-axis, you'll see that I can slide the items along the curve. So I can center them however I'd like. If I were to render this now, you'd see a problem. You'll notice that the lights are floating in thin air. There's no actual wire connecting them. To fix this, select your curve, go to the Object Data Properties tab for the curve, go to the Geometry sections, and set the bevel to however thick you want the wire to be. In my case, I'll go with 2 millimeters. I'm also going to give it the same material as the base of my lights. Now if I render, my lights should have a wire. Of course, the next issue is that my lights are sticking straight up. So let's fix that. With our chain of lights selected, make sure the geometry nodes modifier is selected in the modifiers tab. And we're gonna add a point rotate node. Using this node, we'll rotate our lights around so they're pointing down. This already looks better. Of course, we might wanna add a little bit of randomness as well. So to do that, we can add an Attribute Randomize node. We'll change the type to Vector. We don't want to replace or create a new attribute. We simply want to multiply an existing one. That attribute is the rotation. To start with, we'll set the minimum and maximum values to 1. So here we can just change these a little bit, say 0.9 and 1.1. As you can see, the lights are now slightly rotated, but not a lot, just enough to add some variation. One last bit. If you want to create a curve out of multiple catenaries, this is one way you can do that. Say I wanted two curves along this length. I would put in my three points, select the first two, and another way to create that catenary curve rather than going through the menu is by going to your search and typing in catenary. Once I'm happy with the first one, I'll select the second two. Do the same thing. The problem is these are two separate curves. 
To join them, we'll select them both and press Ctrl J. Now, if we add our lights to this curve, first by changing the curve modifier from catenary to catenary 2, and then saying cursor to selected on catenary 2, and then selection to cursor on catenary 2, you'll notice that the light strand only follows one of the curves. That's because even though we joined these together, they're not one continuous curve. Let me select that curve and put it into local view by pressing forward slash, so that's all I'm looking at now. If I edit this curve and grab this end, you'll see that these are disconnected. One way to fix this is to move each end just slightly, select them both, and press F to fill between them. Now if I exit local view by pressing forward slash, you'll see that it's one continuous curve and that my light strand follows that curve. Now I'm gonna go in and add a bevel of two millimeters to the second curve. I'm gonna delete the first curve and render that out. Finally, if I wanted to extend this curve beyond where it is now, I could simply go into edit mode, grab the end, and start extruding it wherever I need it to go to get the effect that I'm looking for. And of course, if at any time I need more light bulbs, I simply select my light chain, go to my array modifier, and increase the count. So I hope this gives you some ideas of some ways that you can use geometry nodes to create strands of objects, and then use curves to make them look nice. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and click the like button. And if you're finding my channel useful, make sure to subscribe. Again, thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you next time.